Intuitive machine stock is the topic of today's presentation. The title slide here says intuitive machine stock warning. And that's because this stock is getting absolutely out of hand because it's being pumped. So intuitive machines went public using a SPAC called Inflection Point Acquisition Corp. And now it trades under the ticker Lunar or L-U-N-R. So Lunar stock is up somewhere around $80 a share off the SPAC benchmark of $10 a share. So if we look back at space SPACs, so these are all the companies that went public using the Special Purpose Acquisition Corporation mechanism, and this allowed these firms to backdoor their way onto the public markets, perhaps when they weren't ready to. And as you can see here, they did retail investors no favor. So those were the individuals who ended up holding the bag just as we had warned. So you can see here how it's very easy to calculate performance for all of these. They all started at $10 a share, and you can see how they've all uh, plummeted, the majority being, um, let's say, around half of these at least being under, uh, having lost their investors more than 75%. So we've actually covered quite a few SPACs, not just in the space domain. And of the 97 SPACs we've covered that were involved in disruptive technologies, the average loss for those based on that $10 a share price point was 62%. Three quarters of the SPACs, and these are all in our tech stock catalog where we have 460 plus tech stocks, and we have a column in there and it's marked SPAC, and you can just filter on that and very quickly look at all the SPACs. You can see that three quarters of them have lost 50% or more. Nearly half have lost 75% or more. Why? Well, first of all, you need to consider the stakeholders involved here and, and who's interests were uh, put in, in the front row. So you have founders. Um, they pushed, obviously, for the highest valuation possible. So they wanted to raise the most amount of money while giving away the least amount of equity. Then you had sponsors. These were individuals that put together these deals. They simply wanted to close a deal before the music stopped because they stood to make a ton, millions of dollars, by simply doing a SPAC deal. And these were uh, going off left and right, and these individuals were getting quite wealthy for doing very little. Then you had retail investors who funded the entire mess and were left holding the bag once these SPACs completed. Many soared, and I'm not so sure that too many soared as much as Intuitive Machines has, but um, this is no different from any other pumped SPAC that we saw, and what they all have in common is they all float back down to earth. It's something called intrinsic value, and the share price disassociates from the intrinsic value of the company. That's a problem. That's what you see here. So to the moon, it says, for lunar stock, which uh, the last time we checked here, you can see was up 116% last trading session, after hours up another 26%. Um, when the average space SPAC has lost 71% of its value since the merger was complete, why would Lunar be any different? Is there anything special about Lunar? Well, Lunar to the moon uh, is all about the Artemis program, which is a bipartisan initiative to return humans to the moon and eventually achieve human exploration of Mars. So this is the U.S. government driving this forward. Unlike the Apollo program, by the way, a total of 12 male astronauts have landed on the moon, all of whom were part of the U.S. Apollo mission program. This was in the 60s and 70s. So unlike the Apollo program, Artemis is relying heavily upon partnership with the private sector. And NASA spending on this program is expected to reach $93 billion by 2025. Well, what about next year's presidential election? Maybe that will change things and the priorities of this spend. What's quite interesting is that so much money has been allocated to a task that these days should be incredibly easy. So we have far superior materials. If you look at the computers used to uh, land humans on the moon, Apollo 11's guidance computer, it had 2,048 words of memory. Well, that's uh, some of our, our articles on Nanolyze have more words than that. Uh, that was used to store temporary results. Uh, and then they had 72K of read-only memory. Essentially, uh, what amounts to a calculator was used to land humans on the moon. We have artificial intelligence. We should be landing people on the moon left and right. So the fact that 
we're now putting together this program to spend $93 billion to put human number 13 on the moon seems rather odd in terms of our priorities and the things that we have to fix back here on planet Earth. So provided that money sticks around, a lot of it will be going to intuitive machines. So they've managed to already start capturing revenue related to the Artemis initiative. Um, you can see that in uh, 2021, they had $73 million in revenues. They actually had fairly strong revenue growth in the years leading up to that. But what we're mainly concerned with is looking forward here at their estimates. So for last year, 2022, they're estimating $88 million in revenues. Well, when you look at the only financial information that we could find uh, that they filed with the SEC because they haven't filed a proper 10K or 10Q yet, we see that they brought in for the first nine months of 2022, $50 million. That means they'll need to have a fourth quarter that totals $38 million. Now, we're told in the SPAC deck that $38 million is contracted and all but guaranteed. So we're expecting that. And when we calculate our simple valuation ratio to look at the valuation of this company, we're going to use that number because it should all but be set in stone. And investors need to pay very close attention to that because most SPACs out there don't hit their glossy SPAC deck estimates. You can see here this massive growth that they're expecting next year. No, not next year. It's 2023 already. They're going to need an average of $75 million per quarter. That's more in a single quarter than they did all of in all of 2021, they're going to need that to hit their target, which is $300 million for this year. So these are extremely aggressive targets. We find them rather incredible and uh, remains to be seen whether or not they hit those. If they don't, investors need to hold their feet to the fire. Now, when we look at the current valuation, this is quite interesting. Usually financial service or financial data providers don't get the market cap right for whatever reason following these SPACs. So the safest thing to do is to always go into the deck and just do a little reverse engineering. So at $10 a share, the SPAC price, they were expecting a $1.1 billion market cap. All right, well, what are shares trading at now? $82 a share. That's a $9 billion valuation or a simple valuation ratio of 59. We use this um, simple valuation ratio here at Nanalyze, which is simply market cap divided by annualized revenues. There's not a stock in our catalog right now, I think, that's higher than that. Uh, what would be considered rich would be Snowflake, which is a, an incredibly solid and good company to SaaS company to invest in. They're sitting somewhere around 22. So the catalog average, if you look at all the 192 tech stocks we've calculated that for, it sits at around six. So let's say that this firm traded at that average. The implied price would be $8.30 a share, not $82 a share. What's more telling here in terms of the success of their offering is how much cash they actually managed to raise. So here in the deck, they talk about how cash that will end up on their balance sheet is around $358 million. Well, they got nothing close to that because a lot of institutional investors backed out. If they're backing out, why would retail investors who are pumping this thing to the moon think that they're the uh, they're good judges of the value, the intrinsic value of this company? So they currently have $86 million in cash, not the windfall that they were expecting from this SPAC by any means. But another concern we have here is customer concentration risk. So all but 6.3 million of the estimated 88 million in 2022 revenues is from NASA contracts, a single customer. $73 million in 2021 revenues, that was all from a single NASA contract. NASA has them by the cojones. And if anything goes wrong with the next administration in terms of budgeting, this company is screwed. We wouldn't invest in them at any price. But well, that's not what you hear from the cheerleaders on Twitter. So you have your typical Pied Pipers. Many of these individuals, let's say a handful, fewer than, than should have been, uh, gotten in trouble by the SEC for pumping stocks. And you see here individuals out there pumping. This clown here at the top talks about everyone who showed love today. In other words, people who are stupid enough to uh, buy bloated shares of this company. His shout out to all his new rats. And he says, I plan on staying long and 
some bullish bullshit. This guy is pissing on your shoes and telling you it's raining. And you have this other individual that, look, this is telling people want another HKD, talking about another stock that was pumped to the moon. No shares available to short. Here we come with the short squeeze theories. Uh, ranking on Webull, if retail wakes up to this, it could be huge. This is just being manipulated and played around with and hyped. And when you see stocks like this, you shouldn't mess around with them. You shouldn't try to speculate. You should be an investor, not a speculator. You may be tempted to short, and that's a fool's game. We published two pieces here recently that you ought to check out. One is on short selling explained, and because it's very tempting to want to short junk like this or say, Prices that are so exorbitant, it's ridiculous. It's very tempting to try to get in on that. And you don't want to blow yourself up. And certainly funds have done that before, institutional investors. So how, why would you think you'd fare any better? And we also talk about meme stocks. Now, whether this is a concerted effort by a select number of individuals or a loosely organized one just based on a bunch of cheerleaders, the comments usually will tell us. So when we publish this piece, if you see a lot of people coming in the comment section and accusing us of being short or making all these accusations or just opening up their mouths and having their brains fall out, that's usually cheerleaders, people that have nothing of value to add to the conversation that are just angry somebody's cutting in on their easy money. So this could spread out to other space stocks before fizzling out. If that happens, then it's probably more of a meme stock sort of hype than it is some stock promoters that are doing a proper pump and dump. So these stock prices that you see, these inflated prices, they don't reflect the intrinsic value of the company. As we said, we wouldn't buy shares in this thing at any price. If you truly believe that there's something here that you want to invest in and not speculate in, well, wait until they file an SEC document, whether that's a 10Q, should be a 10K, right? Their year end results for 2022. So wait until they file that, give it a good look through. We may do that later this year, uh, along with Redwire. These firms seem to have a meaningful amount of money, only because there's interest there from retail investors, and just see how things are going along for them, and if they're able to hit their aggressive targets, which uh, if they follow suit with the rest of the SPACs out there, they won't, because most SPACs don't. But we need to give them the benefit of the doubt. Now, mistakes that newbies make, a lot of people that perhaps came across this video and they're curious what's going on with this stock. They might be people who are looking for stocks that have the biggest daily gain so they can try to ride that train. You're not going to be some BSD trader. It just doesn't work like that. Or you might be somebody that searches for stocks under $10 a share because they're cheap and you go and buy up some of those cheap space backs. That's not how things work either. So just because a stock price is a dollar a share doesn't mean the company is cheap at all. Don't listen to the people out there that cheerlead this stuff and don't try to go all in on one stock because of fear of missing out because you see that uh, ticker soaring. And also don't just take a little bit of money and say, well, it's just a little bit of money. You're going to nickel and dime yourself to death trying to find uh, the lotto ticket in the stock market, which never happens. Your best bet is don't invest in stocks, invest in companies. So we looked at this company today, we weren't impressed. It isn't a company we'd ever want to invest in. So if this performs like other SPACs, then shares should be priced, as we said earlier, around, well, if you look at the average of SPAC returns, it should be priced at $3.90. If you look at the valuation ratio, as we mentioned earlier, somewhere around $8 a share is probably where it ought to be. But when stocks are clearly being pumped, as you see with this one, don't attempt to join the fracas. Don't sh try to short and get involved with that. Uh, if for some reason you find this firm appealing, just wait until they file a proper SEC document. Now, I put up a video here on short selling explained, which you ought to watch if you're tempted to short this thing. But before you watch that, please click the Nanalyze logo here. Subscribe to our channel. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this today.